In the 60s, it might have been the men with lenses who got all the attention, David Bailey, Terry O'Neill, but these striking images were all taken by a woman. This is a man's world. Working for the Daily Mirror's picture desk, Doreen Spooner quietly made her mark. Not always quietly. I got a byline the first day and they put camera girl, camera girl. I, I was furious, camera girl Doreen Spooner. I said, for goodness sake, you don't put camera boy for the men, so I don't want to be a camera girl. Just please say, give my name. The street of shame was male dominated and pretty antediluvian. This looks like a tribunal waiting to happen. But the chaps respected their distaff snapper. They, they'd always say if a reporter came in, just uh, we've got a rule in here, we don't swear in front of Dory. So that was another nice thing. <laughs> but apart from that, I mean, I was accepted. <laughs> Christine Keeler, with Mandy Rice Davis, was a prime target for the press pack during the Profumo affair. And the phone went on the news desk and then somebody rang up and said, if you want to know where those two girls are, those whores are sitting up in a pub in, in um, Hoban. I went with a reporter, but as we approached, they, there were a lot of photographers had been thrown out so we, we just went in as a couple and I said to him as, as we went in, I said, I can see where these girls are sitting and there's a lady's loo opposite. I'm going in there and I'll take a picture from there. I just put the door ajar like that and stuck the camera through it. My heart was in my mouth because I thought they might not come out very well because it was very dingy. Took the film out hid that in a pocket in case the manager came after me and ripped my camera off. I developed them and what a relief when I saw they'd come out. It could be thankless covering the party conferences, but one year Labour's Neil Kinnock filled his and everyone else's boots. I, I saw that he was walking down and it was getting nearer to the water. So I just chucked my shoes off and was walking barefoot. And suddenly a great wave came and knocked him over. And so I was right down there by that, that, that time and he was laying sort of nearly next to me in the water. So I then, you know, pressed the trigger and had a lot of pictures and got lovely stuff. And when I got back, got back, back out, evidently nobody else had got a sharp picture because the men had got their shoes on and wouldn't come down near enough. The photographer accompanied the royals to China. The day began with the Duke in the firing line over his remarks about slit eyes. I didn't think before I spoke and I said to him, I don't think you should have said that, do you? So he said, no, I don't think I should. I didn't realise you'd told him off, Dory. <laughs> well, there goes well. the damehood. After the Mirror's rivals at the Sun made a success of page three, Doreen Spooner found herself taking topless shots. The girls used to say they didn't mind posing for, for me because it was like, undressing in front of your granny, which I didn't approve of that as a, as a compliment to me. But anyway, we then changed it all and we did Gorgeous Boys at one time. Was that That was fun? the first time that I met Spandau Ballet and they came into the studio. And they were kicking a football round. And I said to them, do you mind? You're going to break something. And if you don't stop that, I'm not going to take your picture, so I'd got a very wooden looking lot of pictures of them. But then I met them again in the Bahamas and um, they had utterly changed and I just got some lovely pictures of them. <laughs> Freddie Reid, who was the royal photographer on the mirror, and he'd come back or something, sometimes looking exhausted, and he'd say, say, how did it go? 
Oh, terrible, he said. Um, he'd say, I've got loads of photographs, but I haven't got a picture. I've felt, felt that all of my time. You've got to get a picture, not a photograph. 